Want to learn data science for free? Well, the sponsor of this video, DataCamp, is having a free week from the 4th of November to the 10th of November. No fine print, no catch, no credit card required. Just free learning for you if you act through the link down in my description below. Something that I've changed my mind on recently with data in general is that I used to be very much of the mindset of being a data generalist, not in terms of the skill, but in terms of the domain that you work in, just having sort of quote unquote, generic data skills. I know how to build this thing so I can go apply these skills in finance, in the medical sector and all of that mm. sort of a thing. But more and more, I'm beginning to tend towards it's worth picking a domain and a domain that you like or you think you'll get value from and tailoring your skill set towards what that domain mm. finds valuable and even your personal projects, this is particularly for people who are early on, I think it's worth it to tailor your skills towards the domain that you want to get into. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so that, that is a good point. Um, deep domain knowledge. Yes. Deep domain knowledge. And that is the, even if you are a generalist, when you start working, you know, in any capacity you're going to have to like develop an understanding of the business that you're working in or you know, if you're in the civil service of the, of the department you're working in um, and you're going to have to consider you know you're going to have to pick that up quickly um, and actually when I started working because I started working for an insurance company I had to learn yeah. insurance basically mm -hmm. um, so I think it is possible to pick up a junior job um, or a graduate job yeah. with low domain experience. Yeah. But the higher you but, go. Yeah. But actually, a lot of the first year of that job is probably going to be you getting up to speed with that domain. Yeah. And that takes a lot of effort. Um, and that's it's not a great feeling having to ask somewhat basic domain questions that everyone else around you knows. True. Or for some people. True. I don't mind too much because I don't mind looking, you know, like not the smartest one in the room if I'm trying to learn. Yeah. But for some people, that would be a very yeah. not nice feeling. Well, yeah. But you, yeah. So you you ask the questions you need to ask to get the job done. Mm -hmm. And you treat it like that. So um, you're not going to be the smartest person in the room on domain questions yeah in fact you're probably going to be the least smart person in the room on yeah. domain questions so you've just kind of got to eat humble pie yeah with that um while you learn the domain while you pick up um actually my manager was really good with this where when i started he set up calls with business leads in like five or six different units of the business to just explain their unit of the business to me nice and like if you can obviously it depends on the culture in your, your company but if you can maybe you know ask to do some shadowing or you know I have some colleagues who um, actually you know if you think in an insurance company a lot of a lot of the interaction with customers happens over the phone. Yeah. So actually, some of my colleagues, when they started, they went to the call center and worked in the call center for two weeks. Well, they're doing sales. No, no, no. Like, uh, like insurance claims. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah. like, oh, so and so calls up, says, I prang my car. Um, I'd like to make a claim, please, and they go through the process. Yeah. Um, and then they would, you know, kind of come back from that secondment with a bit of practical knowledge. Um, so obviously that depends on the company that you're working with they might not do that but actually it's a strong case that you can put to whoever your your first manager is to say hey can I go and meet with some of the stakeholders like one to one or in like a small group or something it's a and good look as well uh, yeah and just learn their business unit yeah um, can I go to you know can can i shadow 
some more of your meetings. Yeah. Um, and just so that you sort of, it's like learning a language by immersion. Yeah. Because um, every every domain that you go into is going to have a whole bunch of its own jargon, its own abbreviations, so many abbreviations. Yeah. Um, and you're you're in effect going to have to build uh, knowledge of a new language almost. Yeah. Um, or at the very least, a new dialect. Yeah. Um, so just the more that you can immerse yourself in that, then the quicker that you can learn. To learn immerse yourself in yeah yeah the domain. Mm. I think that's one of one of the reasons why. Well, coming up, I'll post this after. But yeah, I'm I'm making a move back into uh, the more sporty domain. I'm already halfway in it in my current job, but. Because I'm now realizing the the advantages of specializing in a particular area where I do realize if I'm applying to jobs within the sports domain, because obviously I studied sports science. So just the rate of getting answers back, responses back from companies or recruiters is not even 2x, not even 5x. But if I see the same job, one's in the sports domain, one's not. I'm probably at least 10 times more likely to get a callback in that domain. That is a nice thing about um, data jobs mm -hmm. is the inherent interdisciplinarity. Yeah. So if like us, you started off doing something else and then you come into data science. Yeah. Then you always have a really strong option in going into that intersection Vertical, that domain yeah um it's similar to what you were saying earlier about software engineers that if you're trying to sell just your software engineering skills at the moment it's a tough ask and i do think if you're trying to sell just your data science skills you better be really really good at just those skills if you grew up in some bubble where you have let's say all you know is how to code and how to do math if you're not great at those, it's going to be tough to just sell those. Yeah. Um, I suppose those people just go go to the city and become quants. <laughs> yeah. But again, you have to be at that high level to yeah, do that. You, do. you can't just be... Whereas if you have strong domain knowledge anywhere, it's not that you can be a bad uh, data you know, professional, but you no. don't have to be as high a level. And also you can be you can speak the language of the mm -hmm. people who are hiring you. Yeah. Which is pretty handy. One of the reasons why I'm getting bigger and bigger on specialization is because of AI. I feel, and I'm curious to hear your opinion on this. I feel like if you're just a data scientist with not much domain knowledge, AI is a bigger threat to you because all you're offering is your skills and not much beyond this. This is assuming you don't have elite level open AI skills. But I think as somebody with domain knowledge, you could then leverage your existing technical skill plus AI to achieve a supercharged effect. So to an extent, yes. However, mm -hmm. I think that the, the nature of what data professionals do is actually sufficiently, it has an interesting mixture of objective and subjective. So um, the objective is creating optimal models. Mm -hmm. The subjective is actually knowing which models to produce, what, how to, um, you know, which uh, targets to optimize for, um, you know, even even things like which metrics to evaluate on, like, uh, you know, if you're doing a classification problem, like, oh, uh, uh, do we want rec recall, precision, F1, mass use? There's all of these different things. And because there's so many, yes, it's technically an objective STEM profession, but so much of it is these kind of small decisions. I think it's quite hard it will be quite hard for a large language, you know, a generative AI based system to create particularly automated solutions. 
Mm -hmm. So I think that for a good while, and this is why I made that parallel between data scientists and accountants, because I think f certainly for the foreseeable future, you know, the, the, the you know, accountants used to write things on spreadsheets by hand and yeah. it took ages, right? So that might have meant that there were more accountants back in the day. And then since the 1980s, we've had digital spreadsheets. And these allow accountants to have a lot more productivity. But that doesn't mean that there's no accountants anymore, mm -hmm. right? Um, and if the business, you know, if the business environment that that facilitates allows for greater productivity, yeah, then actually, eventually, the productivity gains balance out the labor requirements, uh, and it and it and you still have a, a viable profession with lots of people working in it. Yeah. So, I'm always a bit skeptical of this idea that AI is going to come and take your job particularly as a data professional like mm -hmm. an AI might be able to handle like some basic insights analytics yeah you know it might be able to generate um, might be able to sort of have a, a plain text natural language prompt and it will come back with a bunch of power BI cheats right? yeah that that seems feasible to me um, but actually creating viable enterprise machine learning models. I don't think generative AI is mm -hmm. going to get there for a long time. I, I see what you mean. And also like just picking the data. See, that's why I think we're actually thinking along a similar lines because picking the data, optimize, knowing which features to optimize mm. for, the deeper your domain knowledge, the, the more decisions you make. True. Yes, which is why I think Specializing. I'm, I'm. I'm not saying. Oh, if you're not a specialized data science with a, I should say a domain specialized data science, oh, your job's gonna be taken. Mm. No, that's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying, the domain knowledge it does insulate you a little bit more and allow you to be supercharged, if you get what I mean. Because if all you know how mm. is, hey, if you give me a table, I know the words to type into Python to get my target and then to get this number i know generally to try and optimize this number i try to you know i don't know standardize and scale the features that sort of a thing you're still super valuable but i feel like having domain knowledge of oh these numbers are affected by these real world factors which is why blah 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 yeah will put you in a better position it's well it's 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 good if you can have it but mm -hmm. I don't think it's currently necessary to have a career in the in, in the industry. I uh, certainly not yet, and I, I don't. So, yeah, I mean, we we each come into data science with a secondary domain mm -hmm. that we're kind of somewhat knowledgeable in, um, and that's great. But. There are plenty of people out there who don't have that. Yeah. Who are still having good oh, careers. Great careers. Great yeah. careers. So actually, it's not. It's a it's a great thing to have if you have it. Yeah. But it's not the be all and end all. So if that if you hear about this and you you think there's an opportunity. Based on that for you, then it's great. That is yeah. a really great thing. It puts you in a really competitive position for finding a job. It puts you in a great position to think of maybe your own ideas mm -hmm. but if you don't have that it's not that it's not the end of the world oh not at you, all you can still yeah. find particularly if you do like so for instance i came out of uni and i just kind of looked for a job yeah that was in data science you know so this job comes up machine learning engineer insurance company um i don't know that much about insurance i kind of know a bit about the you know like coming from a politics background i know a bit about law yeah. i know that there's some you know some kind of relationship between insurance and yeah. law you can finesse it <laughs> but i didn't actually you know like they asked me questions about insurance in the interview i didn't really know any of them but then like all of the technical questions i aced yeah and then it was just a matter of i got in there and uh just learn yeah everything i needed to know so what i will say is that it also depends on the domain. Some domains are, we don't really, we just want you to be really good 
at your technical skills and mathematical skills. Mm. I imagine insurance sounds like one of those. But the other thing is, imagine there was you who went through that exam, right? Not knowing that domain as much. Then there's a you, exact same level of technical skills, but who just loves insurance. He loves Does it. anyone love insurance? Hey, there's anyone there's anyone people out insurance. there, but <laughs> but let's say, yeah. Okay, they just actuaries had, maybe. But... They just had deep domain knowledge yeah. is, is what I'm trying to say there. Um, yeah. I think the you with domain knowledge would have a leg up. Yeah, he would have a leg up. But, but it's but not the be all. And it's end not all. the be all and end all. And um, fundamentally, yeah, I got that job. Yeah, yeah, because um, he, yeah. And and now we're working on stuff which is more in the direction I actually want to go in long mm-hmm. term. Um, but I, I think the reason why I say it's not the be all and end all is that you might find that for your first job, it will be in a domain that's something you just haven't touched before. Yeah, first job's different, for sure. Yeah, like entry level, you know, uh, often like job roles like junior or graduate the expectation of domain knowledge is much lower and that's particularly true of finance yeah definitely but also um it could be you know it'd be the same if you go and work for the civil service because you might have some knowledge roughly of what the I don't know, department for work and pensions does but yeah you know and it's not until you go and work there that you're really going to be knee deep in you know, in the specific yeah in, in, in how benefits work for instance I should say it's domain knowledge in my mind it's not the cherry on top it's the icing and the cherry but there's still a cake underneath so if you don't have your domain knowledge you, you still, still have, have a cake, cake. <laughs> you said cake's great we but then cake. that uh, domain knowledge is like the icing plus the cherry it's it's more important the higher up you go so I think yeah if, I'd agree. If, you, if you want to move sideways, it's not so important. Mm-hmm. If you want to move up, yeah. Yeah, and then it becomes more and more important. Yeah. And don't forget to check out Datacam through the link below to get 25% off.